Good morning. Welcome to Osprey Church. I'm Pastor John, and I'm so glad that you're here with us this morning. We've got three opportunities for you to worship today. You're, you're on the first one. That's right here online on our YouTube page, our, our website, and our Facebook page. And we're glad that you're here. Like I've told you before, we're going to continue this for the foreseeable future. We've also got our in-person, on-campus meeting at 10 a.m. at Osprey, at our Osprey location this morning. And then additionally, tonight at 6 o'clock, we will be meeting in person for a relaunch barbecue at our Y location. That's at 6 o'clock at the Teen Center of the ESJ Y location. Folks, we're glad that you're a part of our lives and we're glad to be a part of yours. I hope that you'll enjoy our worship time this morning and I pray that God blesses you. Hey, how are you, online family? Welcome. My name is Pastor Jared, and I'm glad to be here with you and that you're able to join us in worship today. Uh, We've got a lot of things going on. God is working in our church, and I just want to give you a few updates about what is going on so that way you're uh, well informed of all that's happening in the next few weeks, at least, here at Osprey Church. So first of all, today is our um, moving forward. Our church is moving into phase two of our reopening plan. Pastor John put out an informational video and post online on our website, and you can check that out. It's at osprey.church forward slash go forward slash update. So go to that website. You can see the video or you can read through the information and be fully updated on our church's current plans and where we're at with regard to reopening. We, we started groups this morning and Sunday school uh, hour, social distancing groups, and all sorts of information that Pastor John has provided about uh, things coming up in the next few weeks. So check that video out. Again, osprey.church forward slash go forward slash update. The next thing I want to talk to you about is major, and I'm asking for your uh, sincere 
uh, earnest prayer this week. Abby and I will be joined by Thomas uh, Tyler, one of our youth leaders, volunteer leaders here in our church. Uh, he and his wife have been a huge blessing to us in student ministry this past year, and he's, uh, um, all, it's awesome that he's able to come uh, to our youth camp uh, this next week. We are leaving tomorrow morning. It's hard for me to believe that it's right here. And we're taking 13, other, uh, 13 of our students. We've got a group of five girls and eight uh, guys that are coming with us to go up to uh, Camp Anderson. So it's going to be an awesome time. And we're excited about what God is doing and what God is going to do already in preparing the hearts of our teenagers. So just pray as, uh, as we go up there. Pray for safety on the roads. Pray for each of these students' names on the screen right now, um, uh, and, and pray for them throughout the week. Uh, we're just asking that God, is, that as we hear from God through the messages that he's already uh, planned for us to hear, that decisions will be made. Maybe some will come to faith. Maybe people will take further steps in their faith, whether it's baptism or whatever is that next step. But pray for us as counselors who are taking them and just for everything that, uh, that God has glorified and that we see a great fruit. I want to also say thank you. Thank you so much. We have met our fundraising need for camp, and we are excited that we're able to fully fund this year's camp. So we know that God is good. We knew he was going to do it. And of course, like he always does, he used faithful people in our church and community who gave generously. So thank you all for participating and giving towards our camp this year. It's uh, awesome to have that support and help in the ministry. So we're excited about what is going to happen, and I can't wait to bring you an update next week um, uh, when whenever we get back. So, and then the next thing and last thing I want to update you on is happening next Sunday. That is the 12th at 6 p.m. at the Y. We're relaunching that Y campus, um, and we're going to do that with a barbecue. Um, I'm sorry, it's not the, uh, sorry, we're doing the barbecue tonight at 6 p.m. My bad. Tonight at 6 p.m., the 5th, uh, we are doing the barbecue uh, cookout and all that stuff. The 12th is another service I wanted to remind you about. So two great weeks coming up. The 12th, we've got baptisms planned at the Y. So got those two things mixed up, but the information is correct on your screen and in the emails and stuff that have gone out. So anyway, God is working. The Y is reopening tonight with a barbecue at 6 o'clock for the community and some of our friends and families. You're welcome to come if you feel comfortable, but at least say a prayer for our efforts there at the Y campus. And let's see how God works this week at camp. And maybe we'll have a few baptisms next week. So let's pray to that end. And now enjoy the rest of the service and, and worship time that we have together and the message from Pastor John. I know it's going to be an encouragement to your heart and hopefully a challenge to your faith. Thanks.
Well, I trust that you've enjoyed worship with us this morning. We're continuing our study in the book of James. And this morning, we're going to talk about the kind of responses that we can have that will do and accomplish God's righteousness. And so we're going to be in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 19 and 20 is where we're going to start. It says, My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the clarity of the guidance that you give us in your word. I pray that you'd help us this morning to apply your word to our hearts, that we can grow in you and accomplish the righteousness that you've called us to. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I've noticed in the last few weeks that we have become a very opinionated people. Not just our town, not just our church, not just our country, but in general, it is a more contentious time in history than I've ever lived through before. Now, I understand that that's not the most contentious in all of history, but it's as bad now as it has been. And it's because, uh, from my view, we all are dead set on sharing our point of view, and not just sharing our point of view. But our point of view must be the only way that's right. And our point of view must be true. And our point of view must be what everybody else needs to follow. And I'm going to tell you that the Bible gives us an answer to this problem. The Bible remedies this issue very quickly and very easily in this passage in James chapter 1. And it's not easy, but the, it's simple. Uh, and I think that we as Christians need to start following what James tells us to do here in this passage. I'm going to go with you uh, in, in verse number 19. I'm going to just cover three quick points. The first one is this, just like James says, be quick to listen. I want you to understand that word listen has a connotation with it. it, it the definition is to attend to, to consider, to understand, to perceive the sense of what is said. You know, sometimes we hear what someone is saying, but we're not really listening. And I want you to understand that, that we've got to be a kind of people, that we've got to be the kind of Christians that are going to listen with an intent to understand, that we're going to hear what people say, and we're going to do our best to understand where they're coming from and what their perspective is. Now, here's the thing. Does that mean that everybody's right? Absolutely not. But we must be sensitive and willing to listen. We've got to hear what people are saying. If your uh, mentality is to, con to quickly contend against anybody that believes different than you or thinks different than you, you're not responding in a biblical way. That's what the Bible tells us. Be quick 
to listen. We need to hear what those around us are saying. It doesn't mean that we have to affirm what they're saying and that we have to agree with what they're saying, but it's important for us to listen with the intent to understand. I want you to see in Matthew chapter 7, we're given an example of how this looks in day-to-day life when there's some friction added to it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3-5, through the Bible says, Why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye, but don't notice the beam of wood in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the splinter out of your eye, and look, there's a beam of wood in your own eye. Hypocrite, first look at the beam of wood in your own, uh, first take the beam of wood out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's eye. Here's what I want you to understand. This passage is not saying don't correct a brother. It's not saying that. It's also not saying that if you see someone in sin that you should just let it continue. That's not what it's saying either. But what it's saying is before you ever speak to anybody, you should be taking a moment to examine what's going on in your own life. I want you to realize that we must consider what what needs to be changed, adjusted, or corrected in our own lives in regards to a situation before we start to tell anybody else what they need to fix. Folks, can you imagine if our world, if we would start to examine self when we see something that's not right instead of blaming someone else? Can you imagine how politics would look different? Can you imagine how our, 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 our towns and our cities would look different? Can you imagine how our churches would look different if we'd stop looking to blame each other for things and start looking for our fault in situations? Does that mean that I own responsibility for things that I did not do? Absolutely not. But what it does mean is I'm never perfect in a situation. Listen, as a pastor over the past 10 years, and as a youth pastor, I have had multiple situations where I have gotten into the situation of being the mediator between two parties. And I can tell you, without fail, every single time, neither party was without fault. There is always something that each side could have done differently. There's always something that each side could adjust to make that relationship better. Here's what I want you to understand, folks. Whether someone agrees with you or disagrees with you, whether you agree with what someone else says or disagree with it, you need to examine yourself and look for the situation, uh, the opportunity for you to correct or, or to change something to make the situation better before you ever try to change somebody else. Now, folks, I'm not telling you you've got to be perfect before you can speak. If that was the case, I, I shouldn't be speaking right now. In fact, as I preach, I want you to realize that I follow this very, um, this very example. I, I, I labor over the fact of what I need to change by what God has given me to share with you. I don't ask you to change what God is asking me to change without being willing to change it in myself. And folks, as Christians, though we're not going to be perfect, we must strive to understand. And then when we understand, we must strive to do all that we can and change all that we can in ourselves to make the situation better. I'll give you an example. This week, we started uh, a little bit stricter guidelines with our, our masks. And it's not because I believe masks are the savior of the world. It's not because I'm afraid that God's not in control. It's because I looked at my life and my situation. And I said, you know what? If I can wear a mask and it helps somebody feel comfortable come to church, or if I can wear a mask and it can help someone at the grocery store feel like I care about them and their life, if I can wear a mask and it make just a little bit of difference in whether you're going to catch a disease or not, it is worth it for me to wear a mask. Just like I shared in the video earlier in this week, as Paul said, I do it for the sake of the gospel. Folks, if I'm willing to lay down my life, if I'm willing to lay down my choices, if I'm willing to lay down my will for the gospel, for Jesus Christ, I should also be willing to put on a mask for the gospel and for Jesus Christ. And if I'm not, then I'm probably not really willing to lay down my life. I'm probably not really willing to lay down my choices and my will. And so I want you to understand, we're called to be quick to listen. Let's understand what those around us are saying, and let's be willing to change things and tweak things before we ask anybody else to change those things. He goes on further. He says, be slow to speak. That's our second point. We're going to be quick to listen. We're going to be slow to speak. And as I I look at this, I want you to think about the green light is always there to listen, right? Be quick to listen. You've got the green light. Listen all the time. There's never a time when it's wrong for you to be listening to those around you. Doesn't mean you respond, doesn't mean you uh, agree with everything they say, but we always should be listening. I want you to think about the slow to speak is the yellow light. The yellow light is I gotta slow down here. Before I say anything, I need to proceed with caution. And we see that in verse number 19. He says, Be quick to listen, be slow to speak. This word speak literally means speaking your mind or conveying your own thoughts, 
feelings, and ideas. You know, so often we listen with the intent to correct. Or we listen with the intent to respond. We listen with the intent to rebut. And I want you to understand that we need to be listening with the intent to understand. We need to be listening with the intent to build a relationship. And then when we have an opportunity to speak, it needs to be done so in love. The Bible says, speak the truth in love. And let me tell you something. If you're speaking outside of God's Word, don't pretend that it's the absolute truth. Right? Our president doesn't speak the absolute truth. Our, our Democrats and Republicans don't speak the absolute truth. Your friends don't speak the absolute truth. People that agree with what you say is not the absolute truth. When we're speaking the truth in love, we need to be coming from a stance and from an understanding of God's Word. Listen, folks, in a time of uncertainty, we have certainty in Jesus. We have certainty in the Gospel. We have certainty in God's Word. So he says, be slow to speak. Don't convey, convey your feelings and thoughts and ideas just at the drop of a hat. You need to do so in love. You need to do so in a way that is helpful and that builds and that, that fixes the situation, not, not inflames it. You know, so often we speak with the intent to get our point across. What did that ever accomplish? Folks, we need to speak with the intent to make a difference. All right? So he says, be quick to listen. Be slow to speak. There's our yellow light. And he says, be slow to anger. There's our red light. Don't let anger be the first thing. And here's the problem. Typically today, in our day and age, someone says something you disagree with and we don't even, we, we jump straight to anger and we start yelling and fighting and creating more discord and creating more problems. This anger is the natural disposition of men. The character or temper that comes with anger. I want you to realize it's also agitation, impulse. It's violent emotion, wrath indignation so i want you to see that this anger literally is my knee-jerk reaction i disagree with you i want to fight with you i'm going to fight with you it says be quick to listen with an intent to understand be slow to speak the truth and love and be slow to anger our anger the bible says does not accomplish god's righteousness so here's here's what he's saying when you act on that impulse that knee-jerk reaction that frustration that agitation and you speak out of that or you act out of that and you respond out of that you have effectively made yourself of no use your anger your agitation your knee-jerk reaction will not accomplish the righteousness of god and as god's people and god's church the only mission that we should be dead set about is reaching people with the gospel of jesus christ and so if my anger cannot accomplish the righteousness of god then my anger needs to be removed from the situation does that mean we're going to be perfect absolutely not i i fall prey to this all the time i know that you do as well but we need to be striving to listen, striving to speak in love, and striving to remove anger from our situations because it doesn't accomplish the righteousness of God. And you say, Pastor, how in the world am I going to do that? Listen, if you're like me, it is not natural. And let me just give you a hint. I know that you're like me. It's not natural for you to speak in love. It's not natural for you to listen with the intent to understand. It's not natural to remove anger out of the situation. It's not natural to remove agitation out of the situation. So it tells that we must be changed. We've got to be changed if we're going to make a difference. And there's two ways that we're changed. The first thing is that that eternal change needs to be a relationship. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ if you're going to be changed. We see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. Folks, when you begin a relationship with Christ, he makes you new. He changes your agitations. He changes your anger. And if you'll lean on him, he'll change the way that you respond to a way that brings forth the righteousness of of God. Folks, I want you to realize we need Jesus if we're going to respond the right way. If you've never begun that relationship with Him, I encourage you today, begin that relationship. It's as simple as A, B, C. Admit that you're a sinner. Listen, if you have anger and agitation, you're a sinner just like me. Just admit that, knowing that you need that changed. B is believing that Jesus Christ is the, He came to die on the cross for your sins, and He's the only thing that's going to save you from your sin. And the only way to, to heaven and salvation is Jesus Christ. So admit that you're a sinner.
believe that Jesus died for those sins, that He washed those away. And C is commit to Him as Savior and Lord. He is the only way to salvation. And we need to follow Him if we're going to be saved from our sins. If we're going to be changed in our lives, it's going to be because of Him. The, that's, that's the first you need a relationship with Him. You say, well, I'm, I'm a Christian pastor, and I still respond in anger, and I don't bring the righteousness of God the way I wish I would. I still respond in ways that, that drive people away from Christ rather than pulling them to Him. Here's what the Bible says. You also need a renewing. So we're changed by a relationship, and we're changed by a renewing. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you may discern what is good and pleasing and perfect will of God. What is the good and perfect pleasing will of God? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's a daily commitment to following Christ. Folks, if you don't have a daily quiet time where you spend time praying and reading your Bible, you're asking to make angry decisions. We need to be changed by the influence of Jesus Christ in our lives. He intends to transform your mind and transform your actions and transform who you are, but it only happens when we have a relationship with Him and we go to Him for renewing. Folks, I love you. I'm glad you've been here today. In this time when everybody wants to yell and everybody wants to shout and everybody wants to be heard, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. God bless you. Hello, well, I hope you've enjoyed the service uh, this morning and the time that you've had together um, in God's Word. Um, hopefully it was a challenge and encouragement to you. If you would like to support our ministry, you can go online to osprey.church forward slash give. Again, osprey.church forward slash give, and you'll be able to give online there. We thank you so much for continuing to be faithful in giving to the work that's happening here at Osprey Church. And again, thanks for joining us this week. We're excited about what God is doing as we've moved into this next phase. Feel free uh, to reach out to either one of your pastors, uh, myself or Pastor John, and we'll be back in touch with you if you have any questions or whatnot. We want you to know we're available for you. And uh, I'm excited about camp coming up this week, so keep that in prayer, and we're going to have a great trip. Bye, y'all. We love you, and have a great week.